Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Down to Earth Astronomy. Today I want to talk about some of the science and some of the physics that's been implemented into Elite Dangerous. I'm going to point out both some things that I've been doing uh, correctly and some of the things that are, well, less physically correct. But before we start, I just want to, to say that if you've been subscribed to the channel and you've been following me, you know that I'm a huge fan of the game. I think it's a very good game, so even though I'm going to point out some of the uh, well, not physically correct things that are in the game. I still think it's a very good game and I enjoy it uh, played uh, very, very much. Um, but let's get started. Uh, some of the things that I've course done very, very well is the implementation of many of the stars. And as you might know, many of the stars in Elite Dangerous is actually um, real stars. Um, and they of course then automatically generated some to fill in the gaps where we have um, a, a limited understanding of uh, of some of the stars that has some um, some residual effects. That's because the um, the accuracies of the position of some of the stars is well a bit, um, a bit wonky sometimes. That means that sometimes you get weird structures and weird clusters and and uh, anomalies in the position of the stars. Um, but all in all, I think they've done a very, very good job of actually making um, a fairly good simulation of. Um, of both the galaxy and the star positions, um, and also the planets and how they move and rotate um, compared to each other. And if you've been in the same system for a long period of time, you will note that some of the the objects actually move around in the system. So that's that's done very very well, I think. One of the things that is um, a little less physically correct, as I see it, is the implementation of warp drives. Now, our current understanding of warp drives is. Um, is very limited, of course, and it's still a very, very theoretical subject. But from what we know at the moment, um, the best theory that we have at the moment says that you would have to uh, to need a few milligrams of um, of fuel, or essentially, if you just took the mass and converted it directly to energy um, with Einstein's e equals mc squared equation, you converted the mass directly to energy and used that energy. You will need a few milligrams of mass just to move um, a single atom um, across the whole uh, Milky Way, across the whole galaxy. Now, from that, we can do some uh, some some quick uh, calculations. Um, and what I found is, if you wanted to move, let's say, well, 10 light years, you would need in the vicinity of three times 10 to the power of 13 tons of mass converted directly to energy. Which is of course an absurd amount of uh, of mass and an absurd amount of energy just to move uh, one kilogram ten light years. Um, now, of course, I know that they have uh, implemented warp drives simply because otherwise the distances in the game um, would make the game completely unplayable and the whole uh, premise of the game would uh, would fall apart if they didn't implement warp drives as they did. Now one thing they they haven't done is, it doesn't look like they've implemented um, the red uh, and blue shifting of the, uh, the lights um, that you would expect to see when moving in a warp drive. I know the warp drive is basically is that you are pulling space rather than actually moving, so whether you would see stuff being red and blue shifted, um, I'm not actually, uh, not actually sure, you might not. Um, but even when you're moving in, in super cruise, um, you still don't see uh, objects being red or, or blue shifted simply because what a warp drive does is it compresses and expands space and that's how the ship moves. Um, so instead of the ship moving you move the object that you want to move to closer to you and then you just fly short distance. Um, so so that's the thing about warp drive. I know why they've done it. They've done, they've done it uh, simply because it makes the game playable if they haven't done this um, because then just moving from one planet to another would take days or months, uh, depending on the distance. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the implementation of stars and the star uh, classes. They've used the, the correct um, astronomical classification of stars, so you would know you would see uh, O, B, and A, and F, and M, and G type stars, and all of these type of stars are actually the way 
or actually this is the same classification that you use in uh, in everyday normal astrophysics. Um, so they are that very well, and they also model the stars um, decently. Um, what we don't see, and what I think is is currently missing, is we don't see. Uh, they do have something they call proto stars, but we don't really see the stars in their very very early um, early stages of life. So I would expect, for instance, if I go to the edge of a galaxy arm. I would expect to be able to find a lot of stars that are not yet fully developed, where the cloud is um, is still collapsing and the, st the star has just ignited at the center, um, and we have the disk of dust and the planets are still forming. I, mean, I would expect to find that close to the galaxy arms, but we don't. If that's because that those type of systems are simply locked out of the navigation systems of the ship, that could be an explanation. Um, I don't know, but... Um, those type of stars and systems are not yet in uh, in the actual game, and I really hope it would be something that you would uh, that it would implement in the future, because both it would make the game more uh, realistic, but it would also help teach people uh, a little bit um, more, I would say, a little closer to to, to advanced astrophysics than um, than what they are uh, at the moment. So hope um, I hope they'll do that sometime in the future. Now let's talk about the stations. Um, as you will have noticed, they uh, they have made all the stations rotate. But we're purely talking here uh, space born, uh, space stations here, not the surface stations. Um, and that's of course done to to make an a simulated gravity inside the um, inside the stations. So that's very well done. Um, I think the station models is is pretty good, um, and I like them. Now, one thing I found a bit odd is if you go to uh, to the Elite Dangerous database and you make a, a search for every single uh, space station in the game. There are a total of 14,733 stations in the game. Now that's a lot of stations. If we uh, if we take that into consideration that the game is set uh, 1,286 years into the future, that means that from today we need to build an average of 31.6 stations a year. That's a lot of stations. I mean if we do some quick calculations, that's over two, two and a half-ish stations um, each month. No, yeah, 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 two and a half stations each month from now on and the next uh, 1,200 or almost 1,300 years. Now that seems a bit unrealistic to me that we're able to, with a, a human will be able to build stations at such a rate, especially considering that we at the moment have not have any humans further away than our own moon. We are far from even being close to building stations around anything else than the International uh, Space Station around Earth that we have at the moment. Um, so taking that into consideration, we won't even have the, the 1300 years. We, we, maybe we will only have, I don't know, a thousand years to build the 14,000 stations. Um, and that's an incredible rate to build stations. Um, and of course, I know why they done it. They done it because they wanted to make the game feel alive and to make uh, make it playable. I and mean, if there were only like five, ten, maybe a hundred stations across the whole uh, whole bubble, there wouldn't be that much to do in the game. So they of course done it to um, to give the game a bit more content. Um, I think at least. And. That leads me on to another thing. Well, now the game has been uh, been live for what two, three years at the moment, and yet the only new station that I'm aware of are Jack Station. <laughs> so there's been so in the in the past thousand years, people have built almost over two, maybe almost three stations each month, and then suddenly someday they just stopped, and no one built all the stations. It could be that I don't know if if there's if this says anything about this in the lore that maybe there was at some point a huge boom and people built a lot of stations over a very short period of time and then stopped for some unknown reason. Um, but we don't see new stations popping up every month. So again, uh, and again, uh, I can see why they do do it. I mean, it would be a hassle to have to design and implement new stations all the time, um, and the game could very very uh, quickly become very cluttered. Uh, with stations in almost every single system. Okay, so moving on, the next thing I want to talk about is the planet rings. Um, if you've been uh, been mining, you've probably been inside a planet ring at some point. 
Um, or if you've been to an extraction site to uh, to hunt pirates, you've probably also been in the planet rings, and you know that they are actually fairly thin, which is actually pretty accurate. And maybe the rings is actually a little bit on too thick in Elite Dangerous. We are talking the distance from the top of the ring to the bottom of the ring. If we look at the rings around uh, around Jupiter, they uh, they vary from a thickness from 10 meters up to one kilometer. So the thickest parts of the rings around Jupiter is uh, around one kilometer thick. I mean, that's almost two-dimensional. I mean, they are so flat. <laughs> it's it's amazing. Now, the rings in Elite Dangerous are, I think, a couple of kilometers across. Um, so, again, they are a, a bit on um, on the wide side compared to what you would expect to see in, uh, in real life. And I think they could have implemented a more... Uh, a more physically correct implementation um, of the galaxy of the planet rings um, but again it, then it wouldn't feel as much of an asteroid field which is the kind of feel I guess they're trying to uh, to implement um, and now that we're talking about the planet rings I also want to talk about the rock size um, that are in the ring we do see small rocks flying around but many of the rocks are fairly um, fairly big um, but what we see in 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 the real world, at least we have okay, we have very few things to compare it with. But if we look at Jupiter again, it's it's pretty much not Jupiter, sorry, Saturn. Um, I said Jupiter before. Anyway, Saturn, of course, the rings around Saturn. If we look at the 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 size of the objects inside the um, um, the rings of Saturn, um, we see that most of the rocks is actually pretty much the size of, uh, of uh, dust grains, I mean the small small particles in, uh, in cigarette smoke, that's the size of the objects that we see. We do see larger uh, rocks, and some of the largest rocks we see is uh, approximately on the scale of a large bus. Um, so we do see fairly large rocks there, but they're very uncommon and most, um, most of the, the mass that we would see in these rings are actually very very tiny. Uh, dust-like uh, and gravel-sized uh, particles. Um, and again, I can understand why they implemented the way they do, because it would be hard to do mining on uh, a rock the size of a uh, of of a grain of sand, and it would also take a huge strain on the actual computer that have to render uh, all these small uh, particle effects and the volumetric cloud that they will have to do. So again, I think it's to make the game um, and that type of gameplay more uh, accessible to more people that they decide to implement uh, fewer but very large rocks. Um, but anyway, the video was a bit longer than expected, but that's my quick <laughs> review of some of the physics and some of the science that I've been implementing into Elite Dangerous. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a like down below, consider subscribing to the channel, and until next time, I will see you in space.